Man. Now what? What? Howdy everybody, this is Steve KM9G and some of you know what that means. There's something wrong with my antenna. Let's go outside and take a look. Something looks a little off here. Just a little off. Maybe a little off to the left. And there's a branch in there. This, this branch should not be there. Let's see, that one's tight. That one's not tight. And that one's okay tight. And the rest of the damage. This is 30. That's pretty loose. This is 20. That's pretty loose. 30's on a on a doingy doingy, so it's not bad. 10 isn't bad. 10's on a doingy doingy. It's not bad. What is this one? 12. 12's on a a doingy doingy. It's not bad. And then this one's on. This one's 40. 40 is the one that goes up and over. So I'm going to have to take it down in order to fix that. And there's one more over here, which is 17. 17's got some return strength. So all the ones that are doingy are okay. 20's not bad. And 40's just way out there. Way out there with those sound effects. And then I'll have to tighten up those guys because there's some, some motion there. All right, so what do you do about weeds? Um, what do you do about the, the radial field? I feel like the rabbits aren't doing their job this year. Uh, there is a trick, and I don't know if I'll be able to do it from here or not, but there's a trick where you can get underneath, because the radial plate is totally buried, and I already cleaned it off once this year, where you can get underneath and remove the cap and then lift up the pole and take it away after you remove the flying lead here. I'll do that with a pair of pliers because it's stuck tight. And we'll see how well that works. All right, so that is all squared away. I've got the flying lead removed and I have the cap removed underneath. So this is what I was talking about. There we go. The radials are staying in place. Everything's good to go. And now my antenna is ready to pull down. So this is what years in the Wisconsin winter has done for us. It's not too bad. The pole never collapsed. It looks like there's a little bit of twisting. Some twigs caught up in there. And then this is the 40 meter tangle at the top. So I'm gonna get that squared away. So we'll take a close-up look at all the different radio plates. They're a little dirty, but other than that, they seem like they're in good shape there. Same thing here. A little bit of dirt on the pole. No big deal. Same thing going on. This one here I had to turn. This is the first one from the bottom. I had to turn this one, rotate it back into, into spec, probably 45 degrees or so. And then we come up a little farther. Let's see if I can get better sunlight on here, on there for you. Same thing, a little dirty on the underside, not too bad on top. And this one here, I had to rotate that way, the same direction as the last one. I'm just on the other side of the pole now. Um, probably 90 degrees, maybe a little bit more. The shock cord's a little worn out, so I'll tie a knot in that to shrink it up some. Same thing here. This shock cord's a little worn out too. And then I had to rotate this top plate also. So the whole plate system had rotated. The pole itself isn't rotating. The collapsible sections aren't rotating inside of each other, so that's fine. Okay, so I pulled about two and a half inches, maybe three inches out of that one. That's okay. This one here is fine. There's not really enough to pull out of that one. And then out of this one here, maybe, see if you can get it visible maybe about six inches total out of that one and that's a lot better now all right so i redid the way the 40 meter element went through the top of the mast 
And then on the first one, I have some of that aquarium tubing that Cal sent over, and it only has the going up and over part. The going down part just goes right past it. And then I have the larger piece of aquarium tubing here that's holding both sides to give you some kind of separation between the two of them. And then the rest of the 40 meter element just kind of runs wild, just like that. All right, I think we're back in good shape. Let me get it back up in the air and we'll see what happens. Okay, now we're all set again. I have reattached the guy ropes, guy wires, guy lines, whatever you want to call them. And then I've got two half hitches knots here, so I just tighten them down a little bit. And then we've got our 40 meter element that used to, used to deflect a foot and now only deflects a couple of inches. That's good. This one here is 17. 17 still got some good tension on it. 10, 10's got really good tension on it. What is this? This is this is 12. 12 is doing okay. 30 is okay. And 20 is the one. 20 it just ties off to one of the spreader plates up there. It doesn't actually have any shock cord on it. And then plug the flying lead back in and we're good to go. All right, the antenna is all back up and running. And let's do a little bit of a test here. That is 40 meters is good. Next band is 30. 30 meters is still good, plenty of tunable space there. Let's do 20. 20 is fantastic, let's do 17. Oh, we got some noise on the band. 1.5, that's still pretty good. Let's do 12. Almost two, that's still tunable. Let's do 10. All right, we are back in business. Okay, so that's what happens when you have at least three years worth of winters in Wisconsin with a DX Commander. And a couple of pretty strong summers. We have what they call straight line winds up here. We now have derechos, derechos, derechos. I don't know how to pronounce that word because I didn't grow up in this area. And those are like inland hurricanes. So if you're from the East Coast like I'm from, hurricane makes sense. Why don't we just use the word hurricane? Probably because we're not on the coastline. Who knows? Uh, what you do get also is lots of snow in the winter and temperatures below minus 35 in the winter and above 90 in the summer on some days. Not a whole lot of days. It balances out. So vast temperature changes as well as vast winds as well as lots of rains as well as everything. I'm thinking that that antenna has held up pretty awesomely. The uh, element plates have twisted around a little bit. I untwisted them. The dongi dongi has got a little less doingy doingy so I tightened those up a little bit 40 meter element just just went all wacky so I redid that put it back in the air and as you saw it's pretty good again so fantastic value and that's a that's an important keyword there I did try to build one of these antennas on my own and was not able to do so for the price that Cal offers so I'm really happy with the antenna I'm really happy with the price I had plenty of wire left over for other antenna experiments and it's been fantastic. Highly recommended that you get one of these. If you do, it down in the comments field over on Cal's website, just tell him that T.O. sent you. He'll know who it is. And uh, we'll, we'll all continue to keep the dream alive over there at DX Commander. I am very happy with this antenna. I'm going to get back to playing radio. There are some more videos over here that you might enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. We'll see you in the next one.